Hello, I'm Hamish, and when editing my Forgotten Roblox Games video, I stumbled upon this official Roblox review of a game called The Red in my recommendations. Despite the fact that I have never played nor heard of The Red, I felt captivated. I needed to know about what this Roblox employee liked about this game enough to create a review that is nearly a decade old today. I fell down a rabbit hole. It's as if I discovered a sublevel in a game that I wasn't finished playing through, and made a mental note to loop back to it once my incredibly busy schedule is cleared. And now, more than half a year later, I fear that time has come. The official Roblox YouTube account has a huge amount of playlists, and scrolling down to the bottom of the list, we find the first ever playlist they made. Game reviews by... Max z z z. From what I've heard, Max, with two X's and a Z, is a former Roblox intern, and during his time with the company, he was most well known for creating these Roblox reviews that now feel forgotten in the community, for which there were 188 of these reviews put out. What? Well, that's not completely true, as today a whopping four have been privated bringing the total number down to 184. The first official Roblox review was released on September 13th, 2011, and the last review was published on November 15th, 2016, with the series running for a little over five years and ironically ending a month before I joined. So all these games reviewed come from an era that is before my time. When looking at one of the reviews, Max almost always speaks completely positively on every game he's playing, which makes sense as Roblox wouldn't really release videos trash-talking games in their own platform, but the entire time I was thinking about how much I would actually enjoy these games he speaks so positively about, and the idea of ranking all officially reviewed Roblox games was born. Before we start, I just want to say that my placement of games is subjective, and based on how much enjoyment I got out of them, which will make it so that some traditionally higher quality games are lower down than other more ambitious and unique games to me, or just if I had fun playing them. Every game played is linked in the description if any of these seem interesting to you, as you could maybe have different game genres you enjoy playing. I don't know, check them out if you're interested. Okay, enough exposition, let's get on with the games. Maybe the exposition isn't fully over because first we need to talk about all the deleted games that have been reviewed. This can be our deleted tier for the purpose of this video. These are the games that don't have a remake, don't have a sequel, or have become privated in the decade between the reviews and now. The games that fall into this category are Halloween Paintball 2011, Crypts of the Dune Fort, Imagination, Battlefield, Clash Blocks Battle Card, Crystal Raider, Wingsuit 2.0 Testing, Undead Defense, Spaceball Universe, Twisted Racing, The Red, Confined, Supreme Fishing Simulator, Guest Quest, King Clash, Heist, Skybound, and The Stalker. Putting our total list of games from 184 to 164. Awesome! And now, on to the official tiers. F tier is for the games that either I completely hated playing, or they were incredibly broken to the point where you couldn't actually play the game. With number 164 going to... Space Nines! This game has just become a black void. Draw It is also completely broken with nothing but a non-interactable whiteboard left on screen. Another has a little instruction manual on how to play the game, but never loads in past this white screen. Okay, Hex is annoying, as I could move, but just as a great blob. However, all my friends allegedly were able to load in. I even tried rejoining, but no, this game specifically had it out for me and did not let me play. Darkness 2's title isn't clickbait, as it's literally just darkness now. Darkness 1 has a cool little screen, but it only leads to a Twitter promotion and not a game. Cube Simulator is a white box with spawn pads, but interestingly tries to teleport you to its sequel, which is taken down. The title screen of Strobe makes it look like it'd work, but once you press play, your character just falls into the black void forever. Only the lobby worked in Cops and Robbers, but the lobby is like a dome of reflective glass, which doesn't look good. 
Once again, only the lobby worked in Mashables, but this time it's a square and has a pop-up that won't leave your screen telling you to wait for a second player to join, even if you have a second player in the server. I think this is like a skateboard difficulty obby, but we couldn't get past the beginner stage as the skateboards are broken. Strife straight up tells you that the game is unplayable and kicks you from it upon entering, which is a shame as the lobby looks kind of nice from the one angle I got of it. None of the vehicles work anymore as it throws a never-ending loading bar onto your screen whenever you try to use anything. When you enter Old Football Legends, it has a pop-up prompting you to join the new Football Legends game, which is now taken down, and the actual game itself is broken and kinda just locks a person throwing in an invisible cage. Legend of the Shattered Rune is an RPG with some very unique GUI, I guess, that is super confusing to navigate as there's no tutorial. We were told by a quest giver we needed to kill the level run trolls, but we weren't given a weapon to fight them, so I just walked I walked around for a minute in this liminal space of a Roblox game with nothing to do. Sleeve 2 is another game where only the lobby worked, but this time you could jump really high so it balances out. Very Important Person is yet another lobby only game, but this time we were outside of the White House and for some reason the game auto put us on the terrorist team, which is crazy. I loaded into the lobby of Aliens colon Survivors, which is like a spaceship looking out into the planets, but right when I thought this game was another game where only the lobby worked, for some reason I just started crawling. I couldn't bring myself to stop either, I, I don't know what happened. Whenever we tried to spawn a car in checkpoint racing, they just immediately crumbled and we couldn't stop it no matter what type of car we got, which is a shame as I was excited to play a racing game. Honey Madness consists of a dynamic shot of this tree before asking if you want to do the tutorial, which only has one answer and promptly leads you to yet another blank screen. Dungeon Delver is now just a box, but weirdly enough if you manage to escape the box, you drop on top of what I can only assume to be was a shop, which raises some pretty big questions like, what was this shop's purpose? Why can you escape the bogs? Where am I? In Defend the Frontier, you're meant to kill these little guys that are approaching, but the sword doesn't work anymore, and for some reason, whenever you walk up to the NPCs, they just clip into you, which feels weirdly violating. And the only way to actually kill these NPCs is to take advantage of this glitch and throw them off the map. Stored Fight Tournament Stratus looks so cool in its thumbnail, but for some reason, there's a black screen in front of 95% of the game and prevents all the impressive brick building from being seen. Have you ever wanted to play a zombie survival game where you can't board up the windows again after they're broken and can't get more ammo than the 80 bullets you start off with? No? Quite literally the slowest tycoon I've ever played. Z Defense Tycoon felt like watching paint dry. I played this game for 10 minutes and in that time I was able to buy a total of one upgrade to my base and every 30 seconds a random zombie would jump me and I'd just die. Lumbering 3 was weird as we were able to play the game but after like 40 seconds it would randomly decide to kick us. We kept rejoining thinking it was like a one-off glitch but it kept happening and it felt weirdly personal. We couldn't even make it to the forest. Okay, to be fair, Realm Jumpers did warn us in the title that it was broken, but after a quick pop-up tutorial, lo and behold, the game didn't work. There was nothing that was spawning in, and we couldn't even kill each other. Playing Homesick was heartbreaking for me, as I played it before and remember it being really good, and that it ended with like your house burning down or not, depending on how you played. But when I replayed it for the video, I discovered really quickly that it was completely broken and you couldn't even pick up the first item needed to progress in the game. Spleef 1 looks like it still works, but whenever you break a block, it only breaks it on your screen, which fundamentally breaks the game. And also, as a side note, before writing this section, I always thought Spleef was a game where the blocks disappear from under you and you have to survive it. Like like the, the TNT floor things, but no! Turns out this style of Spleef where you break the blocks under your opponent is actually how Spleef is played. Which I, I didn't know that, no one told me that. I, I, I didn't know I had the wrong definition of Spleef in my head for like 16 years. Just an aimless driving simulator now as you can't pick up passengers or even see your bus fully while driving. 
Don't Blink focuses on the Weeping Angels, which are enemies that look like statues of angels that move. You're not looking at them. But in all the rounds I played, not once were me or any of my friends a Weeping Angel, which is really weird and created rounds devoid of purpose and fear as we all just aimlessly walked around. The Conquerors didn't really work anymore, and all we could do was build barracks. Or barracks. I actually don't know how to spell Is it like the, the president? Maybe? Keyboard Hero had a really visually distinct idea, as in the game a bunch of zombies would spawn and they'd have names like Saucepan or Amethyst, that if you typed out, a small green flame would spawn, and the zombies would still chase you with the loudest music blasting every second. Somehow a boss spawned after a while, and when you typed its name, it did the same thing of summoning a small green flame, but that didn't damage them. I don't know, it feels like these keyboards aren't helping me out here. This isn't really a game, but more a showcase of London built on Roblox, which is fine, but I've never felt the desire to go to Buckingham Palace in real life, let alone on Roblox. Laser Bike Racing has the same problem of spleef, in the way that it baits you into thinking it works, but every other player's laser bike trail only appears on their screen. Which means, yet again, you can't really eliminate anyone. Lumber Tycoon is yet another broken game, as chopping trees doesn't give you anything for some reason. Gladiators go so slowly, as everyone has like 5 billion HP, but for some reason, what really gets me is that you can customize the gore settings in gore type, which for some reason lets you have rainbow robot and MLG gore, which is crazy, as the gore in question is just red circles that appear on the floor when you hit a player. I don't know if that's the best word to use for it. I played with the MLG gore, thanks for asking. <laughs> Mining Incorporated really annoyed me, as every time I jumped, it would just throw me around, and when I found and collected iron, the mechanic to drop the iron into the machines now doesn't work, as it just keeps getting stuck in the back of this truck. I tried for hours, I tried for years, decades. I spawned in Montus Monstrium and didn't have a body. Even when a round started, I just had my monster body stand there while I astral projected my way around or something. I already am not the biggest fan of King of the Hill games, but in the map we played, there literally was no hill for us to be king of. Giant Survival has accumulated many sequels by its creator, and even though the game is polished and working, there's nothing unique to shooting the giant NPC in the map, and I never trust a game made by big games. The games in D tier all fall into one of two categories. Either they're broken games that have their merits, or working games that I just disliked. Both categories are still games I personally wouldn't go back to anytime soon. I've played Armored Patrol before, so I already knew going into it that it's not for me, but upon playing this game for the video, I've learned that I'm really not a fan of war style games and it feels so overwhelming to me while playing. Like how is everyone else not stressed out just by looking at this? Bloxborn had a lot of old Roblox charm, but outside of messing around while flying the planes, everything was kinda janky and broken. I don't even know what the team tickets did the entire time rather than just go down. The title screen in Demented Defense made me think this would be a game where there's a monster and a bunch of survivors, but no! Apparently it's actually a round-based game consisting of hordes of zombies where the character you pick is your fighter and for some reason I had to choose the one with the slowest attacks known to mankind! Air is a game where you're in an airplane and whenever you turn too sharply up it would crash you down. Which is kind of fun, but there's nothing really there. Gears Online looked so 2016 the moment I joined, and it was both weirdly charming and quite repugnant. The actual game was just a dungeon crawler that had maybe like two or three different looking enemies on each floor, and you could just run past them, which is what I did, because listen, I don't have the time to fight the army of orcs I angered by simply existing. That's their problem, not mine. The game didn't give us paintball guns, like, at all. But the map looked really clean, and I liked the little character selection at the beginning of the game, so it, it passes. 
Okay, listen, I played this game at like 1am in the morning, so the only thing I did was grab the shiny blue grass and then hit a wall for 5 minutes thinking it was a tree. But the game just doesn't look good, so can you blame me? And it didn't even work, the tutorial's just a block of text and I ain't reading all that. The first installation in the Sword Burst Roblox series, which is still popular to this day. This game, however, does not work anymore, and the GUI was so disorienting and didn't let us teleport to the beginning area. But for some reason, when we touched this glowing rock, we were allowed to get transported into a world way out of our skill level and kept immediately dying to these rock bulls. I was so shocked that armored ship battle still works for the most part. Like, you could both spawn vehicles and drive them, which is crazy as this is like the fifth game to ever get a review. Even though you can't grab the flags anymore, as apparently it's a capture the flag game, I didn't really care, the game had working submarines. <laughs> Roman Parthia is an incredible building showcase, especially for the fact that it was built in 2013. But the entire time, I was kind of just wandering around, not really knowing what I was meant to be doing, so... I don't think this works anymore. Roadrunner Canyon actually is a showcase, and it looks so cool and well made. The vibes were immaculate, and I'd gladly just coexist in this world while like zoning out, because it just feels so liminal. Stealth is just straight boring. There is no sense of actual stealth, as none of the weapons work that well apart from the sword, and since nobody plays it, the only thing you can do really is slice up the NPCs. There is a police force, but they have terrible aim and are not threatening at all. This is probably the best working paintball game on the list, which is objectively funny as it's the oldest and still doesn't work well at all. This is because the aiming's really weird and you're able to fall into random blocks for some reason. But it did let us shoot. This is probably the worst paintball game objectively, but to me it was incredible. The actual game just takes place in the void, but randomly my friend just shot up into the sky and it made me laugh. All you did in Noob Invasion was beat different types of noobs with the stick, but apart from the classic noobs that we all know and love, there were bunny hopper noobs, fast noobs, space noobs, and the terrifying evil noobs. There was also an obby which was nice, but the main game was just really boring to repeatedly kill the same types of noobs over and over and over again for very little gain. Coal Mine Tycoon's main feature, other than the general tycoon gameplay, is that there were little carts that you would take from your base to the warehouse to sell coal. But the cart tracks curved too sharply, and you would have to manually push your cart very slowly if you wanted to get to your warehouse. In my time of playing, I managed to transport one whole piece of coal. Yippee! A skating rink that feels like it was designed for you to AFK in rather than actually play. I thought the game Roblox Survivor would be like the show Survivor, but in Roblox. Imagine my surprise when it's just another boring survival game which you can only walk in as the jagged edges of time have sanded down this game into nothing. Roblox Point doesn't really have any gameplay elements to it, as all you can do is walk around the park trying to get to the roller coasters, and once you're on one of the roller coaster rides, you kinda just sit there until it's over, looking out into the nothingness of the other rides. I'm 99% sure that this grand mall of Robloxia was only made with the idea of promoting Roblox shirts and making a little clothing store to show off and have people potentially buy your work. But it's cute, and it's a unique way to get more money potentially. I don't know how to make Roblox clothes, so I kinda just put random shirts on the mannequins. But for some reason, it didn't register the random shirts I was trying to apply to my mannequins, so it just auto put on blood stains. My store looked more like a saw trap instead of a cute clothing boutique store that I wanted it to be. The Stalker has a very sci-fi aesthetic to it, as shown in its really unique lobby. But the main game is one of those survivors versus monster game, and for some reason, I don't really vibe with it. I don't like the army aspect, as that encourages everyone to stay together, and I like splitting up and dying one by one, as otherwise the monster has such an underwhelming presence to me. My favorite part about Arcane Adventures was the beginning choice of which elemental magic you wanted to possess, and then after that, it was incredibly boring. The magic element attacks don't really work at all, which leads to most fights just ending up in you punching them instead, which was underwhelming to say the least. For some reason, Welcome to Venezia decided to have two main locations, 
with one of them being this charming interpretation of Venice, Italy, with little shops to roleplay in, and a gorgeous bridge by the lakeside view to look over at the sunset, and the other being the city from Phineas and Ferb across the second dimension. I've known about Miner's Haven for years at this point, but still, for the life of me, I do not understand how to play the game and kind of just place random objects around hoping I'll figure out what to do. I know it's a tycoon of some sort, but there are so many moving parts to everything that I just get overwhelmed and I still don't know what to do to this day. Ultimate Marble Rider actually sucks as you have no control over your marble and are at the mercy of God to see if you actually make it to the end. One of the main obstacle courses or contraptions your marble goes through is this big bowl that you spin around and around it until you get to the hole in the middle, but it takes forever to actually get there. And then afterwards, there's just a chance you'll get stuck later on and have to restart completely, and the cycle continues. The amount of shock I had when this Roblox skateboarding game that hadn't been updated since 2014 had skateboards that WORKED? Insane. Although they didn't work all the time and this door at the entrance took forever to open, I would still consider the Adio Skate Park a win. Ring that bell, another wave-based zombie game has entered the establishment. Defenders of Roblox is equipped with everything you would want. A bright flashy chic lobby, a character selection room, and a horde of the undead. This one's pretty interesting in the way that there's a storyline and a big pop-up that covers your screen if you zoom out too much for some reason. Once everyone in the round dies, a new game spawns, and when we played, we were graciously given the opportunity to try again. But we didn't pick a character in time, so it just restarted us anyways. Whoops. Mining in Roblox always feels so slow, but Mega Miners manages to speed it up by utilizing its really big tractors and bulldozers that quickly demolish a stone. Despite being faster, it felt a bit irritating on how some vehicles would miss certain parts, especially as I spent my time trying to excavate out these ancient ruins, and in the first five minutes of playing, the mine site filled up with lava and reset the whole dig site. Awesome. Combat League is another gun game which worked pretty well, but damn, the burnout I had playing my 46th gun game of the night left me just so disinterested, even if it does still work well today. This one's cool as you get to shoot on a boat, which is statistically awesome. It actually wasn't because it was really difficult to aim and all the action was in the middle of the map and you spawned on the side so you had to drive like 5 minutes before you get shot and killed, but we can pretend! We can lie. In Base Wars, there's a plethora of different automobiles to go around and shoot people in, with my personal favorite being the submarines, as you could fight from underwater. The airplanes and bigger boats were still pretty fun to play around with, though I don't really care about getting to the other's base, because it's more just about messing around with vehicles, and even though I liked messing around with them, the novelty did wear off for me pretty quick. Bloodfest is another zombie wave survival game that both my friends really liked, but I just felt bored in. When you spawn in, you create a character and then kill zombies again and again until you can afford a stronger weapon at the shop and repeat the process. It's really well made and it still gets updated, but for me, it's a pass. Games in C tier are middle of the road for me. All the games here do somewhat work, and I could see a possibility of replaying them, but also I just think they're a bit too convoluted, slow, dead, or broken. Broken Bones 2 is the definition of insanity. I just continued throwing myself off the snowy hill until I got enough money to throw myself off this dirt hill, and it takes forever. Vampire Hunters 2 is a murder mystery game where there are vampires, detectives, and innocents. The vampires kill everyone by sucking the life force out of them and the detectives can kill the vampire. Sounds simple, right? Apparently not to me, as the entire time something wasn't clicking and I never knew what was going on. The vampire kill buttons didn't work well for me, and the rounds dragged on for way too long. Not to mention there was a big tutorial at the beginning that showed you exclusively how to customize your character. A cute little Roblox mountain with many different pathways and secret badges that added a lot of charm for not having much gameplay. Roblox Hiking is a one and done game for me, and I enjoy how peaceful it was compared to everything else on this list. 
Roblox City is an old brick-built town that had fun roleplay spaces like the library and your own home. It was very charming, but it was a bit boring, as nobody really plays it anymore. But at least driving the cars felt like driving melted butter. Medieval Warfare is based on the official medieval fantasy groups on Roblox in 2014. Here, you pick to be a part of Grey Wolf, Core Blocks, Red Cliff, or Overseer. And I picked Core Blocks. There's a distinct color palette for each group, and in it you chop down trees and mine rocks to help contribute to your section. Or, you can steal the flags from the other bases to take over. But I don't know about that because I'm over here mining my rocks and my business. I spawn into this War of the Worlds after an ungodly long time spent on the menu trying to be every other role than civilian, only to spawn into a random suburban garage with the game's sound effects blasting my eardrums while I look up to see the giant mammoth of a beast in front of me, only to then have a random dust cloud appear and spawn another right on top of me. Phantom Forces is a gun game that is well made and still updated, I just never managed to get into the hype. Dead Zone is a Roblox survival game. It's pretty fun to go around stores and loot them all for their worth, but the zombies are just kinda there, and the graphics of this game make it so that nothing really feels that distinct, with the only exception to that rule being the safe zone, where you spawn in and where a good amount of the players are. For some reason, the energy Call of Roblox EF5 possessed was so different than any of the other gun games up until this point. Probably because the characters were just green humanoids and that it was the first game we played for the list, but it just hit different even if our characters couldn't get through some of the door frames. My favorite weapon to use on Roblox has always been this laser gun, and in laser tag exclamation mark, it takes that timeless classic weapon and makes it the main focus of this game. Which is fun, but the aim is a little off and the bullets always go slightly below where you want to shoot, as well as the ability to build a wall and a half wall really not serving a purpose during battle. In Unknown Demise, you collect an unspecified amount of evidence that goes blue and return it to your truck. There's also a spooky ghost that once you encounter, you're basically dead. The game's layout makes it drag on for so long, as most of the maps are barren of anything and are way bigger than they need to be. And by having to find each individual piece and return it to the truck, it makes everything take 10 times longer, and as time goes on it's way less fun and scary as you just get bored. I know Apocalypse Rising was really popular, as it was one of the only games on the list that got two Roblox reviews, but nobody plays on two out of three of the maps, and the one that people do play on is pretty fun, but there's such an unintentional bleak sense of loneliness I get just walking around. I don't know, I feel like I could get into it in the future, but for right now, I just don't like it. There aren't enough people playing Juggernaut anymore to make any of the rounds fair, and even with five people, the Juggernaut auto wins. The bows don't work anymore, making it so that you have to get up and close to the Juggernaut to like attack them, and they will overpower you and you will die. Cubic Cube is literally the worst version of Agario, as all sized cubes move the same, making it more disadvantaged for smaller cubes, and there's very little pellets to grow in most of the map for some reason. It's so barren here, when it has no point to be. Polygons is incredibly polished. Even now, Polygons is incredibly impressive, and paved the path for games like it today. I can acknowledge how ahead of its time it was and how it truly was one of the first games to have this more humanoid appearance on Roblox, but I can also acknowledge that I don't like gun games. Sorry. Farming Among Friends was one of my old online friends' favorite games, which was weird as even in 2017 this game was kinda dead, but now in the year of our lord 2024, this game is also incredibly special to me. So. I may still have difficulty figuring out how to sell things, and I may also have the ugliest farm known to mankind, but it's a calming farming game, and sure, it's probably higher than it would be because of nostalgia, but is that really a crime? Sorry, I'm human and feel emotions. 
Another murder mystery game! This time it has maps that feel very vintage, I guess is the word. I really do hate the font they use for the pop-ups, which is really weird to point out as normally I don't care, but they make me irrationally angry when I see them. But other than that, the game's fine. There's not really any positives nor negatives. It's dodgeball, but on Roblox. You can go in duos or teams. Oblixar is a cool stylistic obby that may at first look a little displeasing on the eyes, but the fully square look worked well for me. Something that didn't work well for me were the checkpoints. Most of them are broken, which made dying a whole lot more annoying. But other than that, it was very interesting to play this game. I liked it a lot, weirdly enough. This is the true neutral of games on this list, because it's literally Pong. There are power-ups and more balls get added as you play, which you can play with up to 10 people and can change the direction you can hit the ball into the other walls. Except you don't see that here, as I was only playing in a game of two, which is just regular Pong. In Hexaria, you can choose your class, to which I chose Wizard, and the game takes place on a hexagonal board. In it, you try to kill your opponent using your magic cards that can damage, stun, or move away from your enemy. It's pretty unique, but there's one specific card called the Metal Fuel card that you're meant to discard for fuel to use other cards, but for some reason it's incredibly confusing to try to get rid of, and our game kind of softlocked halfway through. I have a lot to say about risky strats. For starters, this game is based off Risk, which is a game where you try to dominate over the other players and have every spot on the board be yours by taking over the tiles. The problem with that is that the person who has the strongest head start is almost guaranteed to win, and it just draws out the length of the game and the inevitability of that one person winning. This game specifically has different types of tiles, such as factories that create more troops, forts that have more defense, artillery that boosts attack to neighboring points, and power plants that increase the production of neighboring factories. The map we played on made it so we each had 33% of the map and one connecting point in the middle, which made it so that we couldn't get a head start as we couldn't get to anybody else's section via any weak points, which may sound like it fixed the fundamental anticlimacticness of risk by making us all have 33% of the map before we start attacking each other, but in reality, it just dragged out our game as we all put our troops on one singular spot and nobody could get through to invade each other. This game went on for an hour and most of it was spent with us just doing nothing but collecting numbers to make it harder for everyone else to invade us. The only reason our game ended was because one of my friends disconnected and I managed to be the first to take their stuff, which made it impossible for my friend to win as I owned more spots. There is no being the underdog in this game. It's just slow and boring. Now, with that being said, tabletop games on Roblox have always fascinated me, which is why maybe one day I might play this again, and then have the same rant to share afterwards. Solar Struffle is the same risk-based game, but this one's map is a lot quicker and easier, as there is only 11 points instead of 100 billion thousand. Two of those points being able to instantly transport troops anywhere on the map, and the middle one passively killing troops traveling between planets. Sword fighting has become a dying art on Roblox, and this game was fast paced slicing and dicing fun that was so fast at pairing you with someone automatically, that when I played with my friends, we would have to leave and rejoin if we wanted to verse someone else that the game didn't auto set us with to verse constantly. It's an early draft of Speedrun 4 that still has some kinks to work out, like its loop dying feature for some reason, and the animation packs getting in the way of jumping. Freeze Tag is a game that gets better the more people you have in it. But even then, that doesn't stop the ability for the tagger to just camp one to two people and get everyone. It just feels a bit too easy for the tagger to win with the amount of players we had, and some of the maps were completely rigged either in favor of the tagger or the players. Like this map, which is just an open field and it's very easy for you to be found, or this map where nobody could access these platforms apart from the people who spawned on them. 
This game was the most screwed over from the time constraints playing 164 games creates, as I'm sure its story just gets richer and richer, but from what I've played it genuinely seems really interesting. In the beginning, you get locked up in the opening cutscene, only for the narrator to pay bail and then kidnap us away so that we can train to become a hero. All the while they continue to throw out insults at us for no reason. I'm sure I'll check it out again, but for a game that had 600 visits at the time it was reviewed, it's really impressive how far it made on this list. B tier mostly consists of games that I liked playing and found to have quality in them, but had just a few quirks that make it improbable for me to return to a fair amount of them, with most of that coming down to replayability and datedness. Dragon Rage is a game where you survive the dragon's attacks as they try to destroy your island, and while it is rather slow paced in the beginning, it really ramps up near the end and can create some pretty clutch moments. Blocked Out's map is permanently stuck in Christmas, but that's fine with me because it looks so cozy. The main gameplay, however, is not cozy! It's a tower defense game where you kill your enemies on a path before they get to the end, but in this game, the whole track is on a cube that you can rotate and control with the course going on every side. It's really unique, don't get me wrong, but I have a lot of small nitpicks, like how it would be hard to quickly place troops at the end if things get past your wall of defense, and the ranges of troops also aren't accurate to what they really are. I don't know how sensitive the cube controls are, and I don't like how you have to manually click this button to start the next wave, as I forget to click for like minutes on end, and then just wonder what's happening. Which honestly might be a problem on me, like, after reflecting on it, but I'm still- I wrote it down on this list. Watch Dogs is a game where you can control people and objects, all with the help of that damn phone, with most of the game focusing on little missions that you can do. In the one I did, I waltzed into the club, pulled out my gun, shoot up a man, dance, hack someone's body, weirdly enough, shot some more guys in front of everyone, and killed another guy. It was pretty cool, but the map design felt a bit sterile, and the NPCs everywhere made me feel more alone in this game, as I was the only one playing, and probably had been for like years. In Ultimate Driving, you got cars, and you can do some ultimate driving around the map. There are also races and everything, I think it's cool, I, it just can get a bit repetitive and boring for me. Roblox Battle is another sword fighting game where each player gets a unique weapon and is instructed to get the most kills. It's pretty well made, and I really like the lobby and team selection room at the beginning, as it adds a nice touch that not a lot of other fighting games add. Adventure Rush is in the same boat as the first version of Speedrun, but slightly better just because Speedrun 1's levels are the same as Speedrun 4's, while this has unique groups of levels and a vague storyline of basically collecting the Chaos Emeralds. I fully expected to hate League of Roblox, but the actual game is kinda cool. For one, I really like how each character is based off like a character in the Roblox lore, and it provides a unique identity to the game just by that alone. Although some of the special moves are janky, it's still functional and guarding your beacons is enjoyable, dare I say. Skybound 2 is a fighting game where you each have special vehicles to fight both on land and in the sky. I love how one of the starting automobiles is a castle as it's so whimsical, and being able to customize your own locomotive is really cool. I'm not one for a lot of games this style, but this one's really unique. Fisticuffs is a simple Roblox fighting game where you can only use your fists. There are power-ups scattered everywhere that can give you defense, let you run faster, or do other things. Although the map is very bland looking, the throwing animation that takes place right before you get killed is awesome, so it balances out. Tiny Tanks is the third fighting game in a row on this list, but this time, everyone's split into two teams and has to fight the opposing tanks with your tank bullets. It's very visually distinct, and has a completely different, more relaxed energy from all the other fighting games on this list. 
Monster Islands is a dungeon crawler-esque game that has multiple different worlds, with the starting one being based on this island overrun by zombies, and at the end, you have to fight the zombie king and all his minions. The game still has an active following and still holds up all these years later, which surprised me because I didn't really expect to see it, a lot of games that actually have people playing them. Although the boss does take a while to kill, and the gameplay does get a little bit stale over time, it still holds up. Choices was one of the coolest games I discovered on this list. The game is first designed as if it were a 2D side-scroller with a narrator who seems to hate you for some reason. In the beginning, you're asked if you're a girl or a boy, and whichever one you pick, they'll refer to you as the opposite one. Sometimes throughout the course, the narrator will tell you to do something, and if you do it, they'll be happy with you, and if you don't, they'll get really aggressive. This game seems so interesting, and I really wanted to know where the story would take us, but the game is ever so slightly broken, as some of the moving lava cubes are displaced and you can't get over them, leaving the game sadly unfinishable. Before the Dawn is a very well-working Survivor vs. Killer game, with my main problem being how long the game goes for with very little for survivors to do other than just hide or die. When you get found by the killer, it's basically over, and the intermission is so long on top of that. Everything feels a bit more dragged out than it needs to be, but it still has its moments of suspense and it's pretty fun to play with friends nonetheless. Fun fact about this game, it's actually the predecessor to Incursion, a Roblox game I talked about in my Forgotten Games list. This plays out basically the same as Incursion, with there being aliens and humans, and the aliens have to kill the humans, and the humans have to survive the timer. It's just not nearly as polished or well made, and it does look a little bit ugly, but still it's a really fun premise. Vampire Hunters 1, in my opinion, is better than its sequel to me. With it being easier for me to understand and play, and no stupid long tutorial at the beginning that doesn't even explain anything. While some of the maps are lackluster, it doesn't take away from the fun, and it can be quite stressful at times, weirdly enough. I've never screamed so loud than when I did in this game specifically. I was acting like I was gonna lose my life if I didn't survive. Super Checkpoint is a Roblox-based obby where you start with 25 lives, and when you lose all of them, you restart the entire course. While that sounds scary, the obstacles aren't really that hard, and there are multiple secret levels that fully replenish your health. So it's not the most difficult challenge in the world, but it can be if you're like, not the best at parkour, or just like, new to Roblox. Oh my god, Contrast is such a stunning game. It's one of the most visually distinct games on the entire list. The way it's built is so cleanly done even now, and the ending where your character finally gets to see color is so sweet and stylistically amazing. The only thing holding it back is how weirdly difficult some of the jumps can be, and some general brokenness every now and then. Murder was the funniest murder game to play, but also the most primitive and frankly dead. The maps look very dated, don't get me wrong. There's no one playing, sometimes bullets just don't kill people, but like all murder games, it kinda depends on the people you play with and the circumstances that occur. And my god, there were some circumstances that occurred in this game. I understand that my enjoyment of this was kind of down to random chance, but also, it's the catalyst of joy. Yup, to rob me of joy is to rob me of water, basically. Urbis is one of those games that is designed around roleplay, but nobody really plays it anymore. Despite that, I really enjoyed the little jobs you could do around the map. It's a perfect game to jump in and just decompress after a hard day, especially when it starts raining in-game. Galleons is a game that still holds up well 12 years since it's been reviewed. In the game, there are two teams that each have their own ship, and they have to very slowly sail the seas over to the other team's hidden treasure that is shown to you in the opening cutscene. Most of my time in this game was spent driving this ship that moves a mile a century, but there was some fun action that occurred when both of the ships met after a decade of waiting. It would probably be more fun with more people, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. Kingdom Life 2 is another roleplay game but this time it focuses on the more fantastical medieval fantasy, with you being able to customize your species. You can be an elf, a ghost, a lizarding if you're hiding secrets, and so much more, which really allows you to customize and create your own persona as you play. I chose to be an orc! 
like all of the places built are really pretty to roleplay in, but outside of customizing your character, the game gets a little drab as there's nobody else to really roleplay with anymore. In Fighters, you pick a weapon from the weapons list, and your goal is to be the last one standing in the arena. The weapons have really fluid animations and cool special abilities, depending on the one you pick. Sadly, however, everybody else's animations and weapons are glitched, so that you can only see what you're doing, but you still get attacked by the other people, so it does work as a game. Catalog Heaven is a game I've always been really interested in playing, as the use of Roblox gears being used in a game has always fascinated me as they're such a dead art form. Catalog Heaven is honestly the only place I know where you can still play around with these old gears, and for me, I do prefer the older versions of Catalog Heaven, as you can both fight and try on items at the same time. Call that multitasking. I went into HHCL Hockey expecting to hate it, but it was actually really fun. Like, this game takes place in an indoor ice hockey arena where you only play hockey. Shocker, right? Despite really enjoying skating around on the ice and snatching the puck off my friends, not once did any of us actually make a shot, as we kept running into an issue where we would hit our pucks into the wall of the arena and we would have to restart. Even though that happened multiple times, I still really enjoyed myself for some reason. This game kind of ate. TNT Rush is a game where you run around and every block disappears after you stand on it. This game also has green tiles that heal you, TNT tiles that blow you up as well as break blocks in close vicinity, and steam tiles which can potentially rise you up a layer if you play your cards right. This game can make some really intense matches depending on the people you play with and has multiple game modes. Like this one where you get on a box before the floor disappears and only one person can be on a block at a time. It's a fun break from the main game mode which keeps things fresh. The games in A tier are high quality games that I really enjoyed and found quite unique. They're the type of games which I can definitely see myself returning to one day, whether it's with a group of people or by myself. Roblox City was one of the first games reviewed in the entire list, and oh my god, the brick building is stunning. It's insane how someone made this in 2008. Despite having no gameplay elements, and the illusion of the city is kind of shattered once you zoom out, that does not make what this game created any less impressive and or just flat out fun to explore. I don't fully understand why, but the query made me so incredibly nostalgic for a time period I wasn't around for. This game had such a pull on me in the way that I wanted to coexist in the mines up north, I guess. The calming music and relaxing mining sounds mixed together to create a game that felt so soothing. I played through each of the three maps available, and I loved how two out of three of them were created for specific events from years ago. I have such an interest in Roblox events actually that it's not even funny, and these maps are almost like time capsules of history that have been forgotten. The actual gameplay is the most boring thing in the world, don't get me wrong, but the energy and intense reaction this game gave me was immaculate. In Trade Lands, you can join one of four main factions. The Kingdom of Whitecrest, Nova Ballariska, Helen's Guard, and the Blackwind Pirates. All of them have their own unique islands where you can mine and chop trees, and you can also buy crates of things like grains, potatoes, fabric, musical instruments, you know, the essentials. By traveling between the islands, you can sell this cargo for higher and higher prices the further you go out from the area you bought them in. Not to mention the world building in this game is what really makes it for me, with its own fantasy map of the world and the locations all fitting into this vague historical theme. I know in my past, I played this game fairly religiously with a few of my friends, and it still holds up really well to this day. The mirror game is a simple puzzle lobby. Well, kinda. Each stage has a mirror going through the middle of it, and your goal is to fill in the blanks on what's on your side by looking in the other side and sometimes you just walk through it as well. I really like this simple gameplay, I'm not gonna lie, and it can be really challenging for my singular brain cell to figure out. Sprint racing is kinda just a less fun version of Mario Kart, as the entire race you're locked into the same speed of Roblox characters running. No accelerating or anything. Despite this obvious flaw in the game, it was weirdly intense while playing. We kept overtaking each other and the actual race was so close despite the game literally being so broken half the time. 
And depending on the map, the whole race can just end if you fall through the floor. 10 out of 10. I would recommend this unironically. Okay, who hasn't wanted to experience the Titanic? We've all been there, don't lie! Roblox Titanic is one of the most impressively built games on this list. So much so that my computer was practically combusting, I don't know, melting down when I was recording this game on 4 graphics. The only real problem I have with this game is that after like the second playthrough, you kind of run out of things to do in it, and all the roleplays go the same way, and 90% of the server just sits around waiting for the final 5 minutes in order to feel the slightest hit of dopamine, and all the lifeboats are just patiently waiting the entire time so there's not even any fear that you won't survive, and then you just do it again, and again, and again, and again, and again 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 Panic Attack is a trivia game that I still don't fully understand how it works despite playing so many rounds of it in a round there can be up to eight contestants there is only one because we played with two people and a controller who gets as many lives as there is contestants so, let's say, if there's five contestants, the controller will have five lives. Each contestant will be asked a trivia question, and when they get it wrong, the contestant is out. If the controller gets a question wrong, they lose a life. The game ends when either all the players are out, or the controller has lost all their lives. It seems really fun if you're into trivia, which I am! But I will say, some of the questions can be really unfair. Like, this question which asks how many sonnets did William Shakespeare write? Hello? I don't even know what a sonnet is! Blocks Hunt is a cult classic. This game used to be everywhere, and while it has fallen off a bit, the game still holds up as a classic prop hunt. Being a hider can be kind of boring, especially in maps with designated rooms, as half the time you're just sitting there hidden and only really paying attention when somebody walks in, while starting as a seeker can feel annoying at the beginning as everybody eventually becomes a seeker once found. But other than those minor inconveniences, this game is so fun, and when it gets good, it's shockingly suspenseful to play. Industrial Gladiators was a game I thought I wouldn't like, but it surprised me. The entire game takes place in this elaborate metal structure that slowly becomes more unstable and chaotic as it falls into lava. This led to a sword fighting game where there were so many different paths and opportunities to both run away, charge, and hide from other team members, and it was really fun to just maneuver around it, especially when it started like glitching out as that felt so cool. Reason to Die is a zombie versus survivors game where before the round starts you pick which team you want to be on. The zombie's goal is to kill all the survivors, and every time they die, a random gotcha is fun to see which type of zombie with special abilities they will respawn as. There's the hunter zombie, which moves slow but jumps high, the crawler zombie, which moves fast and jumps a, a normal amount, the bat zomb not zombie, which can fly and spit at survivors, and the elemental zombie, which can summon flames or ice spikes, depending on which element you have selected. Then, as a survivor, you survive it! You're given a gun, but the game is broken now and doesn't let you reload, so really you just have to hide and run for most of the game. If it's not obvious, I think the zombie team is so much more fun to play as, and playing as a survivor is just kind of a drag, so... The Mad Murder has changed a lot since I remember playing it. It still has the classic murder mystery game mode with the innocents, sheriff, and murderer, but a lot of the maps are more based on pop culture references, like Five Nights at Freddy's! The game added a second game mode, which is literally just Arsenal, except you only have the knife and gun as weapons. It's pretty good, but if I wanted to play a murder mystery game, or an Arsenal styled game, this wouldn't be my first pick for either of those. Jeep Oppy 2 is janky as hell, but it was such a distinctive experience compared to everything else on this list. The game both felt like rage bait as well as being incredibly charming, and controlling this jeep felt like gliding melted butter and it was so easy to completely go flying off the map. In the wise words of Immanuel Kant, even if Jeep Obby 2 missed the moon completely, they still landed amongst the stars. 
Another game that's main gimmick is how hard it is to control yourself. Meep City, specifically the Star Ball Obby, I'm not playing the actual game, has you play as a meep in a plastic ball that is instructed to clear the little courses the game creates for you. Each world introduces new mechanics such as geysers of lava, or penguins that bounce you around. And I remember playing this before when I was just a wee lad on Roblox. And oh my scallop, it is so much easier than I remember. The ball, in my opinion, is too easy to control, and none of the obstacles get in the way that much. But with that being said, I'm not gonna lie, I still ride or die hard for this game. It's my favorite thing about Meep City by Miles, and I love marble-based challenges. Framed has always been a game I'm absolutely garbage at because of my incredibly slow reaction times and inability to hit a target, but anyways, Framed is a round-based shooter game where you're given a gun and a target and told to go get him, champ. But, what if you pull out your gun in front of the police officers, you'll be red-handed and the police can legally shoot and even kill you. I've always liked the process of trying to find the person who has my target's face, and even though I'm absolutely trash at the game, I love trying to survive and locate my competitors, even if I do spend most of my time in the lobby, as I always die first. In Retail Tycoon, you're instructed to build your own department store and keep customers happy. You can sell whatever you want in your store as long as you can afford stock, and have the right shelving. Other than that, your goal is just to make a really good store that all of your customers love. Sometimes there will be little robbers who try to steal from you, but you can easily catch them if you're paying a little bit of attention. I love how relaxing this game can be, and how for the most part you just stock up your shelves and add some lively decor. The Roblox Plague is a game where one person each round is the plague bearer, I guess? Okay, well, your screen turns purple and you're instructed to infect everyone else by touching them. It's a simple premise, but it can be really suspenseful, especially as a non-plaguer, I think would be the term, as trying to run, hide, and escape from the plague bearer can be quite intense. Although some of the maps are a little broken and the game does feel a little dated, that kind of weirdly adds some of its charm to me, and I don't mind even if it could use an update. Hands down the BEST sword fighting game reviewed by Roblox. It's an incredibly well-made, round-based sword fighting game, which can have so many different game modes like Last Man Standing, or Teams. The diversity is shocking. My favorite feature in this game is how you can always bet on who will win each matchup, and if you're right, you get rewarded with a bunch of in-game points. It's kind of like gambling. Well, it, I guess it is, but it's risk-free. This can provide more suspense and stakes for rounds which you're not actively participating in, and the game's just well made with a lot of maps looking pretty cool and providing unique strategies involving the terrain, like attacking from the above, or not doing that. Whatever Floats Your Boat is a game where you create your own makeshift raft, watch as THE FLOOD begins, and see how long you can survive on it. A lot of the struggle of staying alive comes from everyone else in the server, and not as much as the rising water levels, believe it or not, as everyone else are all bloodthirsty for your demise and will try to shoot or stab you to death if you get too close. I love the amount of customization in what you can make for your boats, and the combat can be really fun to avoid or inflict depending on the type of player you are. Coalesce is one of those games that executes a simple premise really well, with the main objective of the game just being to get high. At ground level, you can spawn as many bricks as you want, but be warned, the more bricks you spawn, the more you'll have to look after once you get high enough to the point where they start disappearing. Another aspect of the game that makes it harder is, well, other people. Once again, they can sabotage and shoot you down at any time and make you have to restart your journey into the sky. I love how the game has so many moving parts at the same time as having nothing at all, but I mean that as a compliment because it uh, slowly adds features the higher you get. All the games in S tier are cult classics that not only hold up, but also excel in just being a good time. All these games are games that I would gladly play for hours on ends, or replay if they're not designed for endless amounts of rounds. Death Run has the ability to be one of the most enjoyable games that you can play with others. 
everything about it from its simple gameplay of just trying to make it to the end of the course, with its added complexity of learning to trick and dupe the button presser, all while finding shortcuts that make beating the level so much more satisfying. It's quite literally the first game review out of the 180, and it still holds up so well for its time. The only thing holding it back is how it does look really dated because of that, with everything looking prehistoric for Roblox standards in 2024. But even that datedness didn't ruin its enjoyability for me, and it held up a lot better than other Roblox games that came after it. Crash Course is Roblox's version of Wipeout, with it also having that solid color blue, red, and white aesthetic that makes everything look like foam. In this game, your goal is just to be one of the first people to complete the course, and once it's down to the final three, you enter the ultimate challenge, the Crash Course Zone. A lot of the obstacles in every level are things that can move and fling you, which can feel really annoying and unfair sometimes, but also it can feel so incredibly rewarding when you make it, because it encourages you to think more about your timing and ability to pick yourself up when you fall down. It's a competitive obstacle course which doesn't give too far of an advantage to the person most experienced in obbies, but also anyone can win if determined and quite frankly lucky enough to make it. A Lucid Dream is made by the same person who created Contrast, and later Lethal Company. But to focus on this game, it's a much more well-executed and frankly impressive version of Contrast. This time with the game taking place for the most part in this hazy green and blue environment that feels like a pop-up book the way it springs to life as you walk. All the while, the narrator pleads for you to wake up, and then near the end everything glitches out and suddenly you're not just a silhouette anymore, but a person. This game isn't that long or replayable, but it wasn't designed to be. It's a stylistic obstacle course which shows the adventure of waking up and returning to the real world after falling asleep. Mad Games is a series of knife-related minigames, and sometimes it's just a murder mystery. I like how fast-paced everything is here, and the moment how you start getting bored of the game, it changes completely, with a whole new objective to participate in. When I played, we encountered this weird balloon slicing minigame where we had to pop all the balloons for points, and then did a knife spleef where we had to break the glass with our knives, and then we finished it off with a good old-fashioned juggernaut round. It does feel a little obsolete compared to some other minigame-related Roblox games, but it's still fun to play with others, and it works relatively well. Super Paper Roblox is a game that I have a very long history with. For starters, it was the game that got me into Roblox back in 2016 when I watched Dan TDM's video on it, so maybe I am a little biased. But the style of the game is one of the biggest drawing points it has. It looks so unique and unlike anything else on Roblox I can think of from the top of my head. Its mix of both 2D and 3D structures make it look so interesting to play through, especially the main town, as it looks so incredibly well-themed, and I love how there's a storyline that progresses throughout the chapters, and the overall story is really fun to play through. I did accidentally skip half of the first level when I was recording this, as I just made this jump which I wasn't supposed to make, so maybe the parkour isn't as good as I remember. Super Bomb Survival is the definition of a cult classic. It has such a simple premise of just surviving the bombs that rain down on you, but the unique characteristics of each bomb, as well as your ability to strategize with the special abilities, create an endless gameplay loop that always pushes you to your limits by increasing the difficulty factor. I love when games make the game more challenging the more times you survive, and here it excels at keeping you captivated and on your toes. Also, the game just looks really polished and it's really fun to mess around in the lobby, so what more could you want? I love escaping floods. It's intense and action-packed. Flood Escape 1 puts you inside a room with multiple buttons and an escape chute that protects you from the rising water that only opens once all buttons are pressed. I do really like how challenging this game can be, and those moments where you just look at the water rising and know it's over, and then there are moments where you completely triumph the challenge all by yourself. Hate the random button presser section at the end, as that's so annoying and frankly stupid. Like, if I made it through three hard mode levels by myself, why am I being punished by the gods of RNG at the end? Stop It Slender is a game that is definitely stuck in 2016, with it not really adding any new gameplay elements, or even really new maps since half a decade ago, but the games are fun enough to the point where you don't really care. 
When playing as a survivor, finding the generators and obtaining the pages are your goal. And the game can become especially challenging and scary when you know actively that Slenderman is targeting you specifically. It becomes strategic in trying to anticipate when Slenderman will appear again, and a test of your reaction times to look away. While playing as Slender, however, it's just knowing when to pop up and maximizing the amount of damage you can deal to everyone else, which is also really fun to pull off effectively. Both teams can feel incredibly rewarding to play as, and I don't know, it's just really fun. Super Blocky Ball fulfills my favorite niche in Roblox games and gaming as a whole, really, which is being a marble. I love being a ball so much. For me, it's one of the simple pleasures of being alive. In this game is just that, but in racing form. All the maps in this game are fun to play through. It's just a casual racing game, but in a marble. I feel like I've said that already, but marbles are awesome! You gotta be a ball, like what more do I need to say? You're a marble! Cruiser Hyperspace is such a hidden gem on Roblox. Especially considering it was made in 2011. The whole objective is just to survive as long as possible as this little spaceship and avoid the white boxes that not only hurt you but also flashbang you apparently, and make it so you often get hit multiple times in a row. The controls and functionality of this game are all incredible and hold up so well. It's honestly shocking how addictive this game is, and I heavily recommend it. Wheel of Fortune is exactly like the show with the same name. You get a prompt, you try to figure out the word or saying, and spin a wheel for money. Of course, playing this game made me realize how bad I truly am when it comes to guessing anything. I wait until right before the final letter is revealed until I actually realize what it's trying to tell me and buzz in, and sometimes I just straight up don't answer. Although I lament, Wheel of Fortune Roblox Edition is shockingly polished and holds up incredibly well today. Even if I may be a little stupid, I loved playing it and would gladly do so again. Murder Mystery 1 really is the cream of the crop. For starters, it was one of the only murder mystery games we played where there was a full server. And I've always loved having randomized characters to further the mystery in the murdering. So this is the only game that enforced that randomized person aspect as well. Although I think the social deception and everything works incredibly well here, I will admit a lot of the maps are so lackluster, with one of them just straight up being stolen from the Crossroads map. I sure wish this game had like a sequel or something that had better maps. <sighs> Honestly, this placement for an okay made mini golf game is definitely so biased, but hey, I did say at the beginning my ranking would be subjective, not objective, so you didn't know what you were getting into. Mini golf is honestly just awesome. It's an activity that's so funny to do online because of how zany it can be to watch you or somebody else completely flop. Although this game is quite low quality, I don't care. <laughs> I just want to hit ball and hold. Work at a pizza place has quite literally been THE Roblox game throughout the past 15 years. Its staying power is only rivaled by natural disaster survival. And natural disaster survival isn't in the list, so it wins by default. For the singular person who doesn't know about work at a pizza place, the main goal is to do different jobs in Builder Brothers Pizza. You can be a cashier, or a cook, or pizza boxer if you like doing nothing. Maybe even a delivery guy if that's your fancy, I guess. Or a supplier if you want to be alone. My favorite job has always been the cook, which I think is a pretty popular opinion. It's one of the only ones that you feel like you constantly get to do a lot and don't have to drive around the entire map for multiple painstaking minutes to deliver the order only for them to get mad at you. Like I can't catch a break. This game also has those silly emotes and sound effects that play when your character does something, and those bring me so much joy, it's actually insane. Frankly, it's one of the most beloved games on the site, and I too am one of those belovers. Our prayers were answered. Murder Mystery 1 got a sequel! Appropriately named Murder Mystery 2. This game marks the last review to be uploaded to the site in late 2016, and from then to now, Murder Mystery 2 has only grown and grown. It is statistically the most popular game Roblox ever reviewed, and if you've joined Roblox in the last, I don't know, 10 years, you've definitely played this game before. I love this game. It's a more polished and better built version of the first one, with my only critique being that everyone is in disguise, but then again, I feel like an actual murder mystery is not the vibe this game is going for, but more just a casual game of survival. 
All the maps here are stunning, with the new seasonal additions always looking incredible, and the old classics are always fun to play in. The only thing I really truly dislike about this game is how grindy they make their events, but that's merely a nitpick in the human scalp that is Murder Mystery 2. Lumber Tycoon 2 has always been a game I've obsessed over in the past. The game's premise is simple, with you getting an axe, chopping down trees, and selling them to make profits, but there's so much more content there that makes the game feel like a journey in its own right. You can go up the mountain and get lava wood, you can go to the swamps and get golden zombie wood, you can catch a fairy and most definitely get lost in this maze in the futile attempt to get blue wood, and when you give up halfway through you realize that you severely misjudge how large this maze is and the guide you googled doesn't work anymore as the maze changes its form every day, and then you realize you brought too big of a truck and now it's stuck in between the walls so you attempt to go on by foot, but after 10 minutes of barely being able to see the ground, you cut your losses and reset, but now you've lost everything and you never even got the chance to see blue wood! Not speaking from experience, of course, every- every- oh, this happened to a friend. This game is great for just going around and doing things in, it's like its own little virtual third place, and I've always loved buying all the seasonal items that come along every Christmas and Halloween. I do somehow have trauma from this game, as when I was younger and frankly stupid, I would so often get my rare items stolen off of me and then just cry for hours. Which isn't a fault of the game, but it has tainted my opinion on this game, and also my life trajectory. Death Run 2 is the third sequel game from this list in a row, and it's basically all the positives I said about Death Run 1, but ramped up in both quality, gameplay value, and aesthetic. The lobby here looks so good as well. I've forgotten how much I enjoyed playing Death Run until I played it for this video and instantly got hooked again. In this game, the traps are more creative, and it's just a better experience to both be the button presser and the runner, as it takes some serious mental maneuvering to see if you're making it to the end as the only runner playing. Although I never made it to the end, does that really matter here? I'm, I'm here for a good time, and this game supplied that. The bronze medal goes to... Epic Minigames! kind of cheating, I guess, because this game isn't just one singular game to be played, but it's 128 different minigames all put together into one. Epic Minigames has always been a crowd pleaser, and if you don't like the current game, wait two seconds and suddenly you're coming 7th Mario Kart. I've always loved how fast-paced and diverse this game is, all the maps are so well built and incredibly fun to play on, and whether I'm playing with friends or just random people, I've always had so much fun with it. Even though I like a lot of the minigames, there is a noticeable quality decrease in the team minigames for me, as the team minigames are kinda limited in what they can do. Like maybe I don't want to do my 14th sword fight team VT edition. My personal favorite minigame out of the 128 has got to be this one called Compactor Crash. In it, your only goal is to get to a capsule before they're all taken and you die. It's so fast paced, and when I get a capsule, it feels so nice to not get crushed and die. <laughs> the joy of life. Epic Minigames truly isn't timeless hit to me, and no matter how many times I play it, I'll always want to return again in the future. It rightfully deserves to be number 3 on this list. My runner-up game goes to Treelands for completely the opposite reasons of why I love epic minigames. I've always had a weird obsession with this game that's waxed and waned as the years go by, and it's become one of my comfort games on Roblox. The game has an incredibly simple premise with the whole objective being to collect the numerous amounts of fruits in the game to earn money, but it expands on this concept with there being randomly spawning rare fruits or being able to plant other fruits. There's also a quest system which can give you really good fruit or a lot of green apples if the game hates you. But no matter what, I've always enjoyed just searching around this map and collecting anything that can fit in my truck or helicopter if I'm being bougie. In a way, this game is my therapy and it's really helped me just debrief during stressful days. I love it more than any other game on this list. It's so sentimental and important to me weirdly, except... There's one game that beats it out. Adventure Forward Star Savior is a platformer collectathon game on Roblox, which is an underrepresented group in the Roblox sphere. 
I was so thrilled to see that this game got its own review. I've played through this game at least five times fully because of how enjoyable it is to me and the captivating story, but also because it's the prequel to one of my favorite ever games on Roblox, with that being Adventure Forward 2. There is no greater joy for me than finding a Roblox game that I can completely fall in love with, and it's only ever happened a few times in my almost eight years of playing Roblox, but this game is one of them. The worlds are all so unique and fun to play through with my favorite level being level 5, as you can both see the main town in the past and future. Not to mention there are numerous remakes of this game that add so much more story and content, which has absolutely ruined my sleep schedule for weeks. I don't think I could place any other game in the number one spot for me other than this game, as it's defined the style of Roblox games I love playing, and it's been the building block for which I find new Roblox games that frankly scratch that same itch that this game scratched. I know that's a weird way to put it, but I just love this game so much, and that's really all I have to say. After an hour of yapping about games that have been broken and old, I'm so thankful to be done. This video has completely taken over my life for the past three months, and playing all the games was incredibly time consuming and this script is my longest ever. I want to upload some smaller videos more often now, and I hope this year I can do a few more, but I did make this funny clips video to go along with this as an added bonus for making it this far. A mere treat for the people who spent the past hour listening to my voice. Thank you for watching, and good night.